Hello, this is Chrissy Civic, career coach and founder of eatyourcareer.com. Welcome to this video training session on the topic of creating your professional development plan. Today we're going to review the 10 steps involved in this process. If you missed my earlier video called What is a Professional Development Plan and Do I Need One? I really encourage you to watch that one first. It will help make this one make a whole lot more sense. Now let's get started. The process of putting together a professional development plan is a little bit intense and it needs to be. This is a hugely powerful tool so you can't just slap it together and expect it to be worthwhile. You need to put some real time and energy and thought into it. I've created a comprehensive 10 step process and I'm going to go through all 10 steps with you here. But I also want you to know that these are the same steps I go into in depth in my workbook. So if you want more information on how to do this, make sure that you check out the Build Your Professional Development Plan workbook at eatyourcareer.com slash PDP. For now, let's move on to step one. Step one is self-analysis. This is the process of really identifying where you are right now. So what are your professional assets and strengths that you want to enhance in your career? What are your professional liabilities and weaknesses that you want to minimize and hopefully even eliminate in your career? This step really involves looking honestly at the reality of your situation and confronting things that may be a little bit difficult to look at at first. But this is well worth your time and it's part of what I call the self-discovery phase. It can be very empowering to go through this step. Step two is goal setting. So after you look at where you are, you're going to be looking at where you want to go. I usually have people look at one year, three years, five years and 10 years out from where you are currently. It's really important to remember though that the further out you go in goal setting, the more your goals are just guesses, okay? You really can't set goals with accuracy that far out in the future, but it's still helpful to go through the process of thinking about it. I also encourage people to use a process called holistic goal setting. So you're looking at your whole life and how your career works with it. You know, we all know that nothing in life happens in a vacuum. So we have to look at personal goals side by side with professional goals and really make sure that they're helping to support one another. Step three in this process is research. In this step, you're going to identify the skills that you need in order to get where, from where you are to where you want to go in your career. You're going to look at all of the different ways that you can go about getting these things. So I'm talking here about things like hard skills, soft skills, experience, knowledge, even relationships. The research process is probably one of the most intense steps in building your PDP because it requires that you really understand what's truly involved in achieving your goals. And it can be a lot of things. But there are also a lot of different techniques that you can use for doing this research to make it easier and more productive and even more fun. So don't worry about that. If you need some tips on how to do that, just pick up the workbook. There's a whole chapter on this step. Step four in the process is decision making. So after you've gone through all of that great research to figure out what you need to do in order to reach your goals, you need to choose which way is best for you because there are always multiple ways for you to get there. You have to know all of your options. 
you need to basically map all of the possible routes to get you to your goals. So this is like when you're looking at a map and you're trying to figure out how to get from your house to the grocery store. You probably have five or six ways. One way may be faster, but it might go through a bad part of town. One way it may take a little longer, but it's more scenic. So you have to make a decision based on your needs. And there are many proven ways to make smart, effective decisions so you don't just end up throwing a dart at the wall and hoping that it just lands in the right place. This again is something that I go over to in, in depth in the workbook. Step five is to set action items. Once you know what needs to be done, and you've made some decisions about the right way to go about it, you need to define the specific step-by-step -step actions required. So perhaps you need to take a class to learn a new skill, or maybe you need to get a mentor. Perhaps you need to join a professional association to expand your network. Maybe you need to participate in a new project at the office, or maybe it's something bigger, Maybe you need to go get a new job. Whatever it is, you need to define the development steps involved and break it down completely. If you need a new job, what skills or experience do you need to obtain before that can happen? Be really specific with your action items, but also be realistic. Don't overcommit. It's really easy to get excited and want to do everything all at once, but that's always a bad idea, trust me. I have made that mistake more than once and I see my clients try to make that mistake all the time. Step six is resources. So each action item that you define in the previous step will require resources. Typically, you're looking at the limited resources like money, time, approval, and support. So you're going to go through each action item and ask yourself what is needed for each action. What's the cost? How much time will it take to complete? Whose approval might you need? What support will you need from your family members, from your superiors at work, perhaps even from your friends? Outline your required resources thoroughly so there are no surprises. Step seven, deadlines. Once you know your actions and all of the resources required to complete them, you then need to establish specific deadlines for each action item. This is an essential part of this process. It forces you to make the commitment. Of course, again, be really realistic, but choose a date, even if it's just a guess. You can always revise it in the future, but just having the deadline will help you mentally feel more committed to this action item. You always want your commitments to be reasonable. Uh, there's a great rule of thumb that most professional development experts will tell you, and that is that ideally about 10 to 20% of your time or about five weeks per year should be used on development activities. Any more than that is usually a little overwhelming, any less than that, and you probably won't be keeping up with your peers. Step eight in the process is execution. This is the doing part. This is where you actually follow through and make it work for you in the long term. One of the big things that you're going to need in this step is a support system as you work through your plan. This is going to include members of your family, your superiors or coworkers at work, perhaps some mentors, maybe even your friends. Just make sure that the people who need to support you really understand why this is important to you, what you're trying to accomplish in your career and in your life, and ask for what you need from them. Don't be shy. They don't know how to help you if you don't tell them. Step nine 
is revision. The thing that people hate to hear is that creating your PDP is not a one-time thing. It's never really done. It's an endless process of review and revision. You're going to use this throughout your career and you really can't predict the future. So you need to go through it regularly and make updates as needed. You know, no one could have predicted the crazy economy that we've been in for the past few years. And some people had to dramatically shift their PDPs in order to respond to that. There were entire career paths that were completely wiped out and completely revised because of the economy. So maybe you have some new opportunities come your way. Or maybe you've just completely changed your mind about the direction you want to go. That's absolutely fine. But you need to make adjustments along the way. Otherwise, you end up right back where you started and you have to start this process all the way over from the beginning. And the final step in this is tracking. By tracking your progress along the way, you're really making this more of an active process. As you move forward, you will stay on top of it. You'll be able to really quickly shift your focus when you need to make changes, and it won't be a really painful process. The more you track something, the easier it is to make improvements and also to stay motivated because you're going to see your progress right there in front of you. So this step is a critically important component that you don't want to neglect. Now we have a saying here in the South where I am here in Atlanta, and that is, if the how-to were enough, we'd all be thin, rich, and happily married. And I share this with you today because I want you to actually do everything that I've just shared with you. It's not enough to just learn about it. Most professionals are really great at accumulating knowledge, but far too often people fail to actually implement it. You now have a great overview of this 10-step process for creating your professional development plan. You know the 10 main elements that should be included, and I've given you the basics to do it on your own. But now you have to actually do it. You have to invest the time and the energy to put the thing together. I don't want you to get overwhelmed by this process, and I also don't want you to put it off. So with that in mind, I would really love for you to take a look at my workbook. It's called Build Your Professional Development Plan. I have subtitled it a self-discovery and implementation guide for career success because it really does walk you through this process all the way from step one, which was self-analysis, all the way to step 10. And it gives you specific instructions along the way, really engaging in interesting exercises and powerful advice to help you every step along the way. You can learn more about it and pick up your copy by visiting eatyourcareer.com slash PDP. I hope you enjoyed this video training session. Thanks for watching.